All right, so we're good. So good afternoon, everybody. The reason we're here today is uh, I'm going to talk about Operation uh, Cyberstorm, and uh, there's a particular reason why we're covering this today. I'll get to it later on. Um, but on top of that, at the end of this, we also have an update on the Point West case. I know many of you were out with us in Point West uh, when we gave the, uh, the initial findings of that case. We have an update on that one as well. So some of these cases uh, that I'm going to talk about as part of Operation Cyberstorm, you guys have already reported on. Operation Cyberstorm is an ongoing uh, operation that we have through our, uh, our team in Special Victims Units where they are actively getting in cyber tips. As a matter of fact, we served a search warrant early this morning uh, with our SWAT team. Our cyber team received a tip while we were on scene conducting follow-up on one of those tips. So this is a constantly evolving incident. We have regular search warrants that are happening. Some of them you guys have reported on already. Some of them you haven't seen yet. And so we're gonna to get to those here in just a minute. So I'm gonna start off with uh, some details here. This is Arnold Flannery. He was arrested back in April. I know you guys covered this one. We charged him with 50 counts of child porn, porn uh, possession of child pornography. But here's the, the reality and the part that you guys don't realize. We actually recovered over 16,000 images and videos of child pornography in this guy's possession. We talked to the state, he was comfortable, they were comfortable with the 50 counts going forward, but the reality is we could literally have 16,000 charges against this guy. And the victims in his case were from newborn to 14 years old. That's what he's looking at, young, very young children, just one of our, our terrible predators. The next one up is Tyler Lester, arrested in May of 2024. He was hit with 31 counts of possession of child pornography. And the interesting component about him is, we received three separate cyber tips about this guy. So not one, not two, three different tips. And the kids that he's looking at on his computer are between the ages of four and 10 years old. Just a terrible, terrible situation. And we're telling you this to remind you that these monsters are in our community, that they're out there right now, that they're looking at kid child pornography and when are they gonna take the next step to actually touching a kid or doing something awful? So we wanna remind you that these folks are out there. These are all people that we've arrested. The next one up is Claudio Bermudez. Mr. Bermudez has not been arrested in any River County yet. We received a cyber tip. We did a search warrant on his cloud account. He made a download here in Sebastian, uh, multiple downloads. As a matter of fact, 33 counts of possession of child pornography. Once he realized that we were on to him, he took off for Chile. We are currently working with the U.S. Marshals and Homeland Security to get him back in custody. Uh, his extradition is pending. Uh, we have uh, images between four and 10 years old. This guy is in Sebastian downloading on a friend's Wi-Fi. He's staying with a lady in Sebastian. He was staying with her. He's out there downloading 33 counts of child pornography at her house. Next one up, Dennis Houchin. You guys reported on him. He was the military guy. I know he got a lot of coverage. I believe I spoke with some of you about it. Um, the interesting component about his case is he, we have 11 counts of possession, 11 counts of production. The reason he has the production is that he was using photos of his granddaughter uh, to make child pornography. He was actually pasting her face over top of some of those photos. Next up, Jonathan Vasquez, arrested in July. I don't believe you guys have reported on this one yet. Two counts of using a computer to solicit, uh, seduce, lure, or entice a child. So he's reaching out to real people. This is that next step that I was talking about. This guy admitted to trading child pornography, sending terrible message to a 14-year-old in our community, uh, talking about going to her school, talking about raping this, 14, this, this girl, getting her pregnant, and then involving the baby when it's old enough. Sick stuff that this guy is talking about, very disturbing. His pornography that he was dealing in, children ages four to eight years old, absolutely horrendous. Next up, Demetrius Bostic, arrested July, 2024. He was actually charged with one, set, one count of sale of marijuana within a thousand feet of a church and one count of using a computer to seduce, solicit, lure, or entice a child. Uh, the pornography that he was dealing in was between the ages of 4 and 13 years old. The interesting thing about him is the Gifford community 
applauded us for taking this guy to jail. There was actually a homicide that occurred in his driveway. He was in a car when it happened. He said he saw nothing, heard nothing. The community was ecstatic when we took this guy into custody. Uh, not only is he selling marijuana, he's dealing in child pornography, <coughs> and they were ecstatic to have him off the streets. This one got a lot of social media coverage. I don't know that it got any traditional media coverage, but it's definitely one that was a buzz in the Gifford community. This week, we hit a search warrant in Gifford. Bailey Exodus, he is 16 years old, Sebastian High School kid. He should be preparing for school this week. He should be preparing for next week, Monday, to go to school. Instead, he's locked up on 11 counts of possession of child pornography, terrible videos, bondage, and rape of kids, kids tied up. The, he is going to get an additional charge of transmission of child pornography. And although we charged him yet, uh, earlier this week with 11 counts, We've so far identified 347 photos and 342 videos that this guy was dealing in, without a doubt. And I'm going to show you one more picture. Uh, Deshaun Gowans, he was arrested back in June, 14 counts of possession of child pornography, 13 counts of transmission. He admitted to actually selling this child pornography on Cash App. He was getting five bucks. 10 bucks a picture, selling this child pornography. So not only was he downloaded, but he was selling it. All of the children in his cases were between two and four years old. Two and four years old. Now you see, he's rather young, 2005. When we go back to Bailey Exodus, 2008, 16 years old. This morning, our agency served a search warrant, and this is why we're here to tell you about this today. The, the child that was involved this morning is 15 years old. He was downloading it. He admitted to downloading child pornography. Our team is still working on that case over there. They're busy with the devices. We recovered flash drives and computers and all those things. But it's disturbing to us here at the Indian River County Sheriff's Office. We've got these monsters that are out there and we're gonna get them and we're gonna put them away. But we've got young kids in our community that are downloading this stuff and selling it and dealing in it, 15, 16 years old. And the message that I wanna send right now is to the parents that if your kids are out there, and, and this is our program, this is, these are all the people that have been arrested as part of Operation Cyberstorm, and we'll, we'll provide this to you so you can provide specific shots of it. But our task force is working to try and prevent this. And our team is seeing the same apps over and over and over again. And that's on the adults' phones. That's on the people that we're arresting, these bad guys, these monsters. But we're seeing the same apps on these kids' phones. And if you're a parent out there and your kid, and, and these apps, I'm gonna preface this by saying, every one of these apps has a very innocent use for it, that there are plenty of adults who have it and use it totally legally. But if you have a 15 or a 16 year old kid and they have these apps, you should actively be monitoring what they are doing. So Kick, Telegram, Omegle turned into Thunder, Discord, Instagram, Snapchat, Grinder, and Mega. Those are our biggest offenders that we are seeing right now. And for parents, we will put a graphic of that on the press that we put out so that they can see those, so they can investigate those. Today, when we hit that search warrant, that kid's phone has that mega app on it. He's got that information on it. And so there are kids out there who have this and they're being contacted by these other sick people that are involved in this and they're getting involved in the, in the trafficking of this child pornography. So we wanna push that out there, remind everybody that we've got this task force that's running 24 hours a day, 365. We get tips in all the time. We're partners with all these different groups, South Florida ICAC task force. We're getting tips in all the time and we are doing this regularly. We've hit search warrants, I think every week for what the last three or four weeks now on this. We've done two this week. This is an ongoing Operation Cyberstorm for us but it's very disturbing that these young kids are now starting to peddle this stuff too. And we want parents to be aware and be on the lookout for that. I told you I'd give you an update on the Point West case. That's the last portion of this. Elijah Cartwright was arrested. You'll recall if you were out with me that day, he was indicted by a grand jury early, earlier this week. His bond has been set at $500,000 and he has been incarcerated since that day that we arrested him. So he is being charged as an adult. Uh, I believe he was 13 years old, 13 years old being charged as an adult for the attempted kidnappings in Point West. So I know the folks in Point West will sleep better knowing that he is gonna be charged as an adult and that he has no uh, plan to get out anytime soon. So we have that for you. With that, I'll take your questions. Tell us about the Point West case, Point West case for those of us who don't know that. The Point West case happened uh, probably a month and a half ago, excuse me, and uh, we had several instances of uh, this young man attempting to abduct three different women 
uh, three different instances. It was the uh, third instance where we finally was able to identify him in a video. We took him into custody shortly thereafter and he's been sitting in custody ever since. So the update on that is what then? Uh, he was updated, he's 13 years old, indicted by a grand jury. Earlier this week, he is charged as an adult with a $500,000 bond and he's still incarcerated. And what's he charged with now? Attempted kidnapping. Three counts of that? Just one count at this point, that's what we have. The state's still working through that case with our team. He may get additional charges, but right now it's just one count of attempted kidnapping. So if there are three victims and you're only doing the one count. What's the evidence and what we have so far in that case, we only have enough to place one at this moment, but that doesn't mean that he won't get additional charges. Where was he arrested? Where was he found by um officers he was taken into custody as he was leaving his home with his mom as this incident was happening um, we took him into custody and that afternoon we actually had a press conference out in point west and let the community know and let all the media know at the same time that he was in our custody can you tell us the ages of the women that he attempted to abduct and the specifically the age of the one where he's criminally charged with? oh the ages on that do you guys have that I, I don't have that off the top of my head. I'll, we'll get that for you. We'll get that for you. That's no problem. <clears throat> yep. Nick, any questions? Um, yeah, about the any child any, pornography any, um, sure. cases. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. um, so the suspects, do you know where, where they are from? Do you say where are We can get you all that information. Um, we provide you with the slideshow. We'll provide you with the arrest affidavits of all these so you can see the information. Some of them are Gifford cases. The search warrant we did this afternoon was out west. They're really from all around the county. I mean, we, we've, we've had Sebastian cases. We've had tips from all over, anywhere in Indian River County. And add another question. So, sure. do you, so is it like a is it a new trend where you where you're seeing that people are now like they're selling videos of child pornography, not, not just accessing but actually selling them? It's not new to see the sales of it. Um, we are seeing it transition to cryptocurrency. You know, the uh, the one that we do have, the kid was using Cash App, and it was a traditional um, you know transaction. But we are seeing that move to cryptocurrency for these illegal sales of child pornography. Why do you think in, in the child pornography rent, mm -hmm. law enforcement officers, law enforcement offices have been cracking down on this for 20 years now? Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem to be getting any better. Can you explain it? Yeah, it's definitely a concern. Um, it's actually getting worse, I think. Uh, I think that there's easier access to it. As these new apps grow, they're constantly coming out. Uh, every time the bad guys realize that we're occupying a particular app, a new app is created and the creators of it always have good intentions. They put it out there for a reason that every one of us is gonna say, wow, that's helpful to me. Discord is a great example. There are plenty of people that are using Discord to organize things, to do different things, but it's also being used to tra traffic and child pornography. And so that's one of the things why we see it continuing to grow is because there's new internet access, there's new ways for this to travel. In the, you know, like you said, 20 years ago, it was still printed pictures. It was still, people meeting up to trade. Now they're able to trade and never meet, trade across the globe. The internet has really opened that up for, for even further. The other part of it is mm -hmm. this question. Normally, when we cover these, we've seen people that, for lack of a better word, look like dirty old men mm -hmm. involved. Sure. You've got some young people yeah. involved. Yeah, yeah, let's go back you to You start this. noticing that. So really, it's been recent that we've had these young kids that have been involved, and that's a, a disturbing trend for me, and that's why the reason I said, hey, we gotta get this out there. As we lead into the school's year, we want the parents to know, you need to be checking your kids' phones and looking to see what they're, do, what they're doing on those phones, because there are plenty of kids who have Snapchat. Doesn't mean that they're trafficking child porn, but should you be having a conversation with your kids? Absolutely. It's a great time to have the conversation with the kids about how the laws have changed and how if you send a threat over Snapchat, a written threat is gonna get you arrested and expelled from school. These are all good reminders as we lead up to the school year, but specifically disturbing that we've got two high school students this week that we did a search warrant on that I had to call Dr. Moore, our superintendent, to say, hey, you've got two students that aren't gonna be starting on Monday because of this situation really a, a bad scenario bad scenario Corey any questions so they were distributing or selling or their transactions that you guys documented them? so all these are different types of cases there are some of them where it's just child pornography possession each one of them it goes through on here and we'll give you a copy of this for you to have oh. yep and we'll, we'll get you all that information for example this kid is the one who was selling yes. he was he has 13 counts of transmission 14 counts of possession and those are usually what we can prove but as I said in my statement there are many times where we have way more images 
We just follow through with the charges that we know we can make. So if he was, can you describe how he was selling, who he was selling to, like that? He had an online account. Uh, I don't want to get into the details because I don't want to encourage it in any way. Um, but I can tell you that he he was making contact with other people who had similar interests to his. And this particular guy, he's selling images of kids that are between two and four years old. I mean, absolutely disgusting stuff. Terrible. You spoke about parents um, mm -hmm. monitoring their kids' devices. What about in schools? Now that technology has become such a huge component of schools, yeah. what can maybe staff do? Is there anything in place in schools to monitor devices? There is. I'll tell you, the school devices are actually very well locked down. We have a great relationship with the schools. Um, I feel very confident that the system of security that we have in place at the schools would capture anything that they're trying to do. And I will tell you, the school and the school district can give you a statement on it, but throughout the year, they get some kids who decide that they're going to use Google and try and search something on a, on a school computer and immediately they get an alert they go down and talk to the kid they figure out who it is the computers are assigned to people it's pretty easy for them to track down it's stuff like this and it's usually not a PC that's the interesting thing that we're seeing it's usually a phone most of the stuff that we're dealing with these days is phone related. Some of the older collectors, some of the older guys, they're still using computers, they're still using thumb drives, things like that. But most of our younger cases, our newer cases, are the kids who are using phones to transmit child pornography. And so that's why I say to parents, check those phones, make sure you're looking at it to see what they're doing because these kids are gonna get labeled a sex offender. These old guys that have already done it, that are arrested, they're all gonna go off to prison, they're gonna be labeled sex offenders, all that's gonna happen. But these are young kids that are involved in this too, and that's a terrible situation. Your message to kids that are partaking in inappropriate behavior that could escalate already, that maybe they are aware as much of their actions right now and how it might veer on that line of becoming a criminal, like you said. What's your message? Without a doubt, that 15 year old kid this morning when we had SWAT make entry into the house, if you could have seen his face, you would know how serious he realized that situation was all of a sudden. And uh, earlier this week when we hit uh, the house of Bailey Exodus, he knew right away why we were there. There's no doubt in his mind. So um, I believe that these teenagers know better. I believe that they know that they're crossing a line. We're not here today because these 15 years old are looking at 15 year old kids online. They're looking at two year olds. They're looking at four year olds. All of us know exactly what's going on there. And this isn't situations where they accidentally clicked on something. This is 11 counts of child pornography. He knows exactly what he's doing and he knows why we're there when that happens. That's what we can prove, right? We know through our tips that there's more stuff flowing through. These are what we can prove the moment we do our search warrant. So my message to those kids is, if you're in a situation where you feel like you're addicted to this pornography, addicted to this you know, child pornography, talk to somebody, go, let's go deal with it. I'd much rather have somebody come forward and say, hey, I've got an issue, I'm 14, 15, 16 years old, than end up with the SWAT team in your, in your front yard. So the two you've arrested this week, mm -hmm. Is it Bailey's one? One, one is one? it Bailey's in custody. The other one, we took the devices, and we have to do this a lot of times. We had the search warrant this morning. We're going through devices right now. He's admitted to uh, downloading to us, um, so we will be processing him, and we'll get you that information as soon as it's available. So his name may be coming out. We're not releasing it yet. No, we're not releasing it yet because we're still processing everything on that case. So I have two questions. So yes, you, you've used several times the term monsters. What do you mean? Uh, when you go back to these guys, when you go back, I mean, this guy here, Demetrius Bostic, he's selling marijuana. He's dealing in, in little kid child porn. I mean, let's go back to him for a second. Demetrius Bostic. Between the ages of 4 and 13 years old, this guy is online talking to a person in Gifford, sending disturbing messages. It's a, it's a fine line for these folks, and we oftentimes have people that we arrest for child pornography, and it's a matter of time before they take that next step and they start contacting these young kids. And that's what we've seen with a lot of these cases. Some of these ones that I detailed earlier, uh, Jonathan Vasquez, he's reaching out to a 14-year-old. He's telling her he wants to get her pregnant. He wants to rape the child, the baby, when it's old enough. I mean, that's crazy to make that leap. And so in my mind, absolutely, these are monsters. These are people that are trying to prey on our, our most vulnerable population, our kids, and uh, absolutely unacceptable. Um, so these guys were doing all of this to make money or because they had a, a, an now, appetite for child porn? There's, there's a few of them that are selling it. 
Uh, when I say Operation Cyberstorm, and you, you see the different pictures of all these different people, each one of these folks has different motivations. Not every one of them is selling, not every one of them is uploading. Many of them are downloading for their own purpose. Many of them are chatting with underage people. Um, they're all up to no good. Are and they all part of the same ring or something? They're not connected in any way. This is, the only connection is the fact that the Eddie River County Sheriff's Office is committed to getting these folks off the streets. If you're out there downloading child pornography, if you're out there uploading child pornography, if you're out there and you are chatting with underage juveniles with bad intent, our team is lurking in the shadows, and it's a matter of time before Operation Cyberstorm catches you and you're over here in our jail. And when you've got all these people, is through just uh, anonymous tips or, or what? We have a great working partnership, as you can see in the uh, task force slide here. We work with uh, our ICASC South Florida Task Force, as well as the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children uh, out of uh, Virginia. Uh, John Walsh actually started that. They've got an incredible partnership with Microsoft, Google, uh, all the different corporations. And so uh, we get a, for cyber tips from a variety of different places. And when we get those cyber tips in, we take every one of them seriously. So I think you counted off about eight names here, am I eight, right? Yes, sir. And how far back does that go? When do those arrests? The start? first one was from April, April to today. So there was actually the ninth one is today. So Nine April to today. And we're hitting them. We're hitting them every every couple weeks. We're going to hit another search warrant, and this week we've done two. Did I, did I get that correct? Nine arrests in four months. Sounds eight, that sounds eight, about right. Eight. Eight, 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 eight arrests, arrests in four months. We're, yep. we're still looking at the ninth. Yep, ninth one today. The one today is you're not counting that. He's not in custody yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for coming up today. I really appreciate your time, and uh, we'll answer any of your questions. We'll get you more data on this so you can get it pushed out to the public. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you.